So this is the third video in my series about state machines, and this third video didn't went as planned at all. My first video was about why state machines are useful. Uh, you can find the link to it on the video description, and if you're watching this on YouTube, the link should be here somewhere. My second video was about, because state machines are a pattern rather than a library, was about creating a simple state machine hook on top of use effect and use reducer. But because having a library helps, um, this third video was going to be about xState, which is the most popular state machine library for JavaScript. But here's the thing, I was having so much fun creating that state machine hook that I created on the second video that I just didn't stop. I had more features, uh, I had help from some TypeScript specialists, and at the end I think I got some pretty darn good library for some users and some use cases. So now I'm gonna talk about it in this video. Uh, you can find it on github.com slash casiozen slash use state machine, and I'm gonna show some code samples. If you want to skip directly to the code samples, the timeline has chapter markers, you can just click there. But first I'm going to talk about why uh, uh, would you like, why would you use this instead of using xState? Now, xState is the golden standard of state machine libraries for JavaScript. This library, it's, it's smaller in terms of has, having, having less features uh, and it only works in React. But here's the thing, having less and doing less can actually give you a different set of trade-offs and, and have be an advantage in some cases. Because it only works in React, it was built on top of React's built-in hooks, which do most of the heavy lifting. Uh, as a consequence, this library is very, very small. It's less than half a kilobyte. Uh, also, it follows React's patterns of coding that you're used to. Uh, and you don't have to deal with two different libraries, one as the state machine, one as the hook uh, uh, wrapper. It's just one thing. The second thing that this library does nicely is xState is so big uh, and it has so many, in, ter in terms of functionality, it has so many cool stuff that it's almost a meta language. Uh, and TypeScript is not there yet. It doesn't have all the features that xState needs to be uh, uh, type completely type checked and, com and having complete type inference. But because use state machine is smaller and we made some concessions in how the configuration is set up, it means that it's TypeScript first and the support, TypeScript support is amazing. Uh, it will infer your configuration automatically. As soon as you start typing the configuration, it will suggest and fix uh, uh, your error. So for example, your initial state cannot be a string no other than the states that you defined. And then as you use the state machine, everything will be type safe. Even if you're using JavaScript, because modern editors such as Visual Studio Code, Nova, they always run the TypeScript language server if you're coding JavaScript, it will not enforce the same things as if you're using TypeScript, but we will at least suggest auto-completion based on your configuration for free. Uh, so all things combined, if you're a React developer uh, and you want to add a state machine to your component, uh, I think this is a, a solid option. But enough talking, let's jump straight into two examples. So the first example is a timer. It's not a super complex component, but it does come with some tricky parts that are really good fit for a state machine. So I can start, I can pause, and I can reset. Uh, and I already have some, there, there are some things that I want to do. Like I don't want to show all three buttons at the same time. I only want to show the start when I can start. I want to show the reset when I can reset and so on and so forth. And I also already have a bug because uh, when I click on the start button here, I start an interval. I store it uh, in a ref so that I can clear it later. But if I hit start multiple times, uh, I have now have multiple intervals, the things the, the timer goes faster and I lost the reference to the previous one, so I cannot pause or stop the timer. So this is a great solution for a state machine because if I were to do this in just plain React, my next uh, uh, option would probably be creating a bunch of booleans uh, in my state. I would probably have something like is running, uh, but is running is not enough because it could be running or idle, or it could be in a paused state. So what next? Should I have two booleans, is running and is paused? And the problem there is that if you have two booleans, because you think it represents two possibilities, it actually represents four possibilities, right? Both true, both false, true and false and false true. 
And as you increase the number of booleans, this goes uh, uh, exponentially. And this makes this is the kind of thing that makes your code brittle because it, it becomes possible to put your code in uh, a state that you didn't predict before that you're not that your code is not prepared to handle. What if both? end up being true, uh, either because you did it accidentally or, or because a different member of the team have had a different understanding of what their means. The state machine solves that. Let me stop this because it's annoying. The state machine solves that because it has two parts of state, right? It has the finite piece of state, which is finite state machine's name came from, which are the states that do not change during the execution. I come up with the possible states when I create the state machine. So I could say that in this case, it will be either idle, running or paused. And the state machine will enforce that this component can only be in one of these three possibilities. And then there's the extended state, which is where uh, uh, variables can change freely, where, where I'm going to store, for example, the time itself. So let's start refactoring this into a state machine. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install it. So npm install gas usen slash use state machine. So next I'm going to import it here. I'm not going to use any of these hooks anymore. And for simplicity's sake, I'm going to start by copying and pasting some code. So here's my initial configuration for my state machine. Use state machine, I'm going to receive back the machine state and the send method. And these are my states, idle, running, or post. My initial state is idle. And uh, use state machine also has this verbose option that logs things in the console, which is useful for debugging. And just by defining these uh, uh, possible states, I can now rearrange my UI to just show the buttons whenever I'm in, the in, in an acceptable state. For example, I'm going to remove all of these controls here. I'm missing a slash div here. So the machine, it has a next events property. It's just an array uh, that includes from my current state, where can I go next, which transitions are available. And I can use that to drive my UI. If I can hit start, show the start button. If I can hit pause, show the pause button and so on and so forth. Now, how do I define these transitions? Well, I can use the on keyword. So idle, I can expect a transition named start and that leaves, leads to the running state. From the running state, let me do more copy and paste, it should be quicker. If they, I can expect a pause event, and that pause, if I receive that pause event, it will transition to the paused state. And finally, from the paused state, I can go, I can receive a reset to go back to idle or I start. Now, I just wanted to quickly mention that I can, my transitions, they can have like this shorthand syntax where I just point to a string of the state's name or I can have this object notation which will be useful later because I can add more, more stuff to, my, to the transition like cards. For now, I'm just going to use plain strings. We we're talking about booleans and how they can lead to brittle code. Now the state machine enforces that this component can only be in three possible states. It's either idle, running, or paused. And I can use that to derive my UI, for example, and so on and so forth. The second thing state machines helps with is that if you had a bunch of a bunch of these booleans and you had to control the start and the stop of the timer only when you're in certain states, you would have to write that code and you would almost write in a state machine yourself, but without of the without all of the guarantees that a state machine can give to you. And with a state machine, not only gives enforces some guarantees, but it also gives you a specific place to add those codes, uh, those pieces of code. And these are on the effects. Effects run when I enter or leave a state. So for example, when I enter the running state, I want an effect that starts the timer. And similarly to use effect to react to use effect, if I return a function from my effect, this function will be executed when I leave these, uh, these state. So it starts the timer and then leaves the timer. The effect function has access to this update function that I can call to update the variable state 
that is part of my state machine state. Some state machines libraries like this one and like X state, they have two pieces of state, right? The finite ones, which are these ones that don't change, that I, uh, that I decide when I create the state machine, but also an extended state, a piece of state that is more like reacts use state that I can freely change. Uh, this is called extended state or context. And in new state machine, you can set its initial value in this separate parenthesis here. So I can say that I have this time piece of context. It starts at zero, and then I can call update to change its value. Cool. Some more effects. When I hit, uh, when I leave running to go to pause, it's already going to pause because it's going to clear the interval as I leave this state. Uh, I also want to reset it, the time back to zero when I go back to idle. Well, all things done, things should just work now. Of course, there are some errors. Uh, I forgot to update what I'm displaying here. I'm not displaying time anymore. I'm displaying this time comes from the machine context. So this is going to be machine.context.time. There you go. Now I only see the start button. If I press the start button, it starts running. I only show the pause button. If I pause, I have options to go both get back to started or reset. For my next example, I will do some data fetching, but with a small twist, I want to have some retry logic in case the server returns an error or the connection fails or something happens. And this small twist already makes it that much more difficult to handle it uh, if you're writing custom code. Yes, I know that there are libraries out there that already deal with data fetching, with retry logic and caching and a bunch more stuff for you, like React Query. But here's the thing, I'd like to think of React Query uh, and even React Router for that matter as specialized state machines. They are extremely good and handle a lot of edge cases, edge, edge cases for those situations, for that use case. And by all means, go and use those. But what about the other difficult, complex parts of your code that are specific to your project. There, there are no libraries for that. I think that a state machine is a better primitive, is a better starting point for those cases. But again, because data fetching is something that everybody is used to, I'm going to use it as an example. So let's get to it. I have, uh, I'm fetching some list of copies from this sample API here. In this case, I'm just using use state and use effect, just react, and I don't have uh, retry logic here. And again, I have all of those booleans so that I can control what to display. Uh, and again, I have the situation where, what, how do I represent failure? Should I add another boolean? But now I, if I add another boolean, I have six possibilities. Uh, or should I interpret that some combination of is success, with uh, empty array uh, of coffees. How am I going to figure this out? So yeah, let's just get rid of all of this and use a state machine. I'm going to get rid of all this, including the use effect. And I'm going to paste my initial state machine here. And notice that in this case here, I'm using uh, TypeScript. So I'm missing import use state machine from using use state machine. So here it is. Notice that in my setup, I already have a context in TypeScript. Use state machine will always infer your configuration. So for example, if I try to do the initial state as something else, it will immediately throw an error and say that it's trying to find a state called this whatever garbage this is. So I'm going to go back, fixed. Uh, so I don't have to provide uh, a generic, but for my extended state, it can also automatically infer, but if my initial state doesn't contain everything that I need, I can optionally provide a generic saying everything that my uh, extended context can contain. So in this case, it can contain a number of retries, that's what I'm going to use, accounts of retries, that are what I'm going to use to, to do two or three retries or whatever, the data itself, and a string for error. And I'm initializing it only with retry count of zero. Uh, next, I'm going to just go ahead and update my UI with uh, the error message. There we go. 
So it's loading because it's initial, initially in the loading state. Now, in the loading state, I'm going to have an effect that's actually going to do the data fetching, right? So this is what I'm going to paste here. It's pretty much the same code as before. The difference being that inside the effect, I not only have access to update, to update the context, and that's what I'm doing here. If I successfully download the list of coffees, I'm updating the data in the context with the list of coffees. Or if I have an error, I'm updating the error piece of context with the error message. But I also have access to the send method. It's the same method that I have access here to trigger a state change, to, to trigger a transition. So in case I'm successfully download uh, the data, I'm triggering a, a change to the success state, otherwise I'm changing to the failure state. And that's pretty much it. I don't have the retry logic yet. Uh, and then retry logic, it's going to be very, very simple to do. Here's what I'm going to do. Inside my error state, I'm simply going to say, well, if I ever get, oh, wrong, based on the wrong place. If I ever get to the error state, simply retry. <laughs> That's all. So if it goes to the error state, it's going to send a retry and the retry goes back to loading. So every time it goes to error, it goes back to loading and runs the effect that tries to fetch the data again. That's all. I'm also incrementing the retry count. Now, this will lead to an infinite loop, right? If every time I hit an error, it goes through the error state and sends a retry, it, it's going to keep doing that uh, forever. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add a guard to my transition. That's why I'm using the object notation here instead of the shorthand notation. I can give a guard key. And the guard is simply a function that returns true or false whether this transition is allowed to happen. In my case, I'm just going to check the context and see if my retry count is less than three. This will return true or false. And then if uh, uh, I retry three, two times and it tried for three times in total and I can't, it's just going to stay in the error state. Uh, to simulate that, I'm going to open my console here. I'm going to open the network tab. Notice that I'm loading the copies from this API. I'm going to block this API for now. Oh, enable network blocking, of course. There I go, fail to fetch. Notice that it tried three times. And if I go to the console, it failed to fetch with it count zero, goes from loading to, to error. As soon as it hits error, it goes to back to loading because the guard allowed it. It does that a couple more times. And then I have this transition from error to loading denied by guard, and it finishes with a, 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 a total of three retries. That's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Both of these examples are available in the Use State Machine repository. If you like it, please comment and subscribe, and see you in the next one.